Today we're taking a look at the WASP WMB160F system. This is a 160 kilohertz solution. And what we're looking at over here is the sonar view, looking from port over here through to starboard over here. Gives us a very good indicator of what's happening real time below the boat right now. So we can see the nature of the terrain changing. This application we look at today is focusing on your typical potting type territory, quite foul terrain. Uh, for lobster, crayfish, crab, that sort of thing. And because the terrain is changing so much, this white seafloor line is quite handy for showing us uh, an averaging. Now, we can see fish coming through in the water column here, as well as some real rugged uh, terrain. Down at the bottom of the screen here, what we have is our, um, is our uh, sounder view. And this is viewed at the moment as a triple beam sounder. Some users may be for more familiar with a single beam. And in a single beam sounder, this is the newest information over here, and this is the oldest information. The benefit of this is that this sounder screen gives us good history. So as targets come through here, we've got them coming through, fish targets coming through in the water column. Uh, in the sonar view, that's right below us right now, uh, instantaneously, and it's obviously quite a big school. Um, and it's now starting to peter out. And here we see the same school uh, as viewed in the history. So th this is the benefit of having history and the benefit of real time. And some users prefer to use a uh, triple beam view. So you can see, um, while our swath is 120 degrees, we can actually select a triple beam view and view three areas of the water column below the vessel. So I'll ch turn on the triple beam again. Now what's interesting is that I don't actually have to use this um, predefined view predefined view that we have here I can actually change that so I'm now going to go into my options and I'm going to say I want to look at a pretty narrow field of view so I'm going to change this down to five degrees and my beam width down to five degrees so now I'm looking at a very narrow area below the boat um, maybe 20 degrees There you go, so I'm looking 20 degrees out, and as you saw before, the beams can overlap if you want. And then whatever's occurring in this beam comes through over here on the port side. Anything in the center beam comes through in this window. Anything in our starboard beam falls through over here. Always new information on the uh, right-hand side of each of these three, three screens. Now, this is uh, really, really important for giving us... Uh, real information, real-time information, acoustic information, where the schools are, if you're looking for fish, for, in this application where the seabed is, the terrain is, uh, for targeting our, um, our the areas we're going to lay our pots, etc. So what we've done is we've got here our navigator software, which takes everything to a new level. Using the acoustic data, the fish um, finding data that was gathered on the previous screen we just looked at, we can now actually render our own maps of the seabed. And these can be viewed in 3D or 2D. The areas of grey are areas that we've not mapped. And the areas we have mapped come through in the shapes and colours. You can see the area of grey through here. This is where our swath, our 120 degree swath, didn't quite line up with the previous map. So we could pass through it back through the middle and fill that in. In terms of detail, the maximum uh, level of detail you can attain with the Navigator swap software is accuracy down to a quarter of a square meter. And uh, those of you who have done a bit of uh, fishing on these sort of terrains, you might have dived, sent a diver down or gone down yourself and noticed that while the bottom was real craggy, your uh, traditionally your sounder showed it as quite a, a rounded, approximate sort of uh, lump. Uh, you never got this sort of detail and really WASP is the only system on the market that uh, delivers this kind of detail and that's all achieved through those 112 beams that we generate across a 120 degree swath so each beam is just over one degree in, 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 in uh, uh, angle which means that we, we know exactly what's going on in each of those quadrants to give us this kind of uh, detail which really is impressive so this is exactly what it looks like out on the boat uh, running live now what I haven't shown you is we also have uh, other acoustic information coming through which we can filter out or on as we prefer and uh, that's in the form of fish, water column targets. So here you can see the fish as we passed over them in 3D. And the colors correspond uh, in the same way as a conventional sounder and, and, and our WASP in terms of the 
the intensity, the, you know, the darker, the, the reds are your stronger echoes through your yellows and greens to your blues being weaker. And all while this is going on, I'm hopping between two screens, but uh, a typical installation would have uh, uh, dual monitors, one monitor running this uh, navigator program, which uh, shows the information in either 2D or 3D. I'll just center back on our ship again. Um, and the so that would be one display, and the other display monitor would normally be showing this information, which gives the skipper uh, the real lifetime uh, acoustic uh, data. Now, as we're heading on to some uh, slightly flatter terrain here, I want to show you a, a cool feature we've got. I'll turn the fish off for a second. Uh, right now, we've been looking at uh, colors, and those colors can be identified and scaled. So, at the moment, we've got our color setting on automatic mode. I'm going to change select to the wasp. I'm going to change it to manual, and I can now start to target specific depth. So, I'm going to bring my color range right in, and you can see that I can target. So, I'm currently targeting between. Now I'm going to target between 35 and 36 meters deep, one meter difference, and it now only colors just that band. Anything below, uh, shallower than 35 meters will be gray, and anything up here, and anything deeper than 36 meters will be gray. So this gives uh, fishermen a really, really good uh, idea of the shape and terrain if they're targeting specific depths, uh, and showing you know passes through between rocks and crags and that sort of thing. So, and we can view that all in 3D as well. So you can really start to get an idea of uh, where the ledges are and the gaps and passes. You can see through here, there's nice channels. So it stands to reason that um, a lot of species um, like us can be a bit lazy. They'll take the easiest path. So fishermen can now start to identify uh, exactly where uh, these, these uh, species are going to Gonna, gonna march and, and, and lay their pots accordingly. Okay, so that that's our color overlay, and I'll just link it back to the wasp for a second to make it easy. Then it does it all for us, um, and we can see out here on the um, there you go. And out here on this area, it looks pretty flat, but I can change it instead of showing color depth as we are now. Obviously, I can show monochrome depth. Uh, which can be quite handy when you're showing your fish overlay. They stand out quite well against the grey. Um, but anyway, besides the colour depth, I want to show you this. It's called Backscatter. And this gives us a good indication of uh, of the hardness. Now, it needs to be set up properly. So we're just going to set our thresholds. And here you can start to see areas of hard versus softer. And this can give us uh, a good indication of uh, where to target. Um, for instance, if we if we look back through some of our track down here, we can see here there's a, some definite area of very hard. And you watch this; it's quite interesting. If I just put it back into the color depth, you wouldn't know any different. The in terms of the the seabed terrain here, it's pretty flat. Um, there's not a lot to see. But when I put the backscatter on, it gives you a real indication of where those harder areas through coming through is this magenta color. Uh, you can, if you prefer, in the configuration set it up to grayscale. Um, some users prefer that, the white being your, once again, your uh, your harder echo, and um, the darker being your softer echo. Um, I prefer the color. So, really, really handy for, sometimes maybe you've got uh, sand overlying rock, and now you've got that uh, added advantage of knowing you know where that harder area is, and maybe it holds resident species. Um, that's up to you to, to define. So here we can see a fish school um, near this rock structure. So as you can see, habitat uh, obviously holds fish life. And let's have a look at that in 3D. So there you go, there's some fish in 3D. Okay, I'll change the overlay back to, there you go, back to our colors. And here we go, we're coming back down and doing another pass. I've got this uh, nifty add measurement device. I can measure the distance between any objects and put a profile window across it. And it is dynamic, so it will constantly update as you shift it around. We can actually expand that window if we prefer.
So that's a quick overview of the uh, Wasp WMB-160F. It appeals to many different types of fishing applications. And today we've just looked at some of the advantages we offer the uh, potting uh, industry in terms of uh, targeting lobster, cray, um, crabs, those sort of species. And I um, hope you've enjoyed the presentation. If you would like any more information on the product, please contact uh, Wasp directly. Uh, contact details can be found on our website at wasp.com, W-A-S-S-P.com. Thank you very much.